Hey there and welcome. My name is Scally and today we're going to be walking through a very quick video on how to go from a QR code generator all the way up to a 3D print. Now the reason why you do something like this is to have something that stands out when you're trying to drive audiences to your website or to your business or what have you. Uh, so in my case, I recently started a Kickstarter campaign and I want to put place this in local gyms all around. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out in the description below. It's Carbon Wad. It's a rugged uh, carbon fiber fitness tracking board. And I want to be able to have my audiences scan a QR code that stands out, that's rigid, that feels great in the hands. It looks great. It's eye catching. It's colorful. And we're going to be talking about how we can create something like that today. So without further ado, let's jump right to it. All right, here we are in uh, our browser view. You'll see that there are multiple websites we can uh, accomplish the generation of a QR code. One of them is QR code monkey. There are a couple others too, QR code generator and beacon stack and even stuff like visual QR. For today, we're gonna be focusing on just using QR code monkey. It's a 100% free QR code generator and it gives us all the features we're gonna need First step here, quite simple, enter the URL. I'm gonna enter the URL of the Kickstarter we just talked about. For colors, I'm not gonna worry about this too much. Uh, reason being is that we can set all the colors we need in the final uh, step, which is the 3D printed slicer. For logo image, really key here, present it with a vector image. Now, if you present it with a PNG or a JPEG or what have you, it's not going to uh, be recognized correctly when you bring it over to a 3D modeling software that has those vector features. In our case, we're gonna be using Fusion 360 again. So let's go ahead and upload uh, a vector logo. I'm gonna click on create QR code. Now this is just incremental because it doesn't really give you a live preview. So a couple things. Uh, you'll see that the logo here is not centered. In addition to that, you'll see that it has a lot of surrounding data. And we'll, we'll just want to remove that by checking this box here. And if I regenerate this, you'll see that it removes the area where the logo is supposed to be. Now, keep in mind that this is not really an accurate preview because as we'll see later in the next step, this logo will be centered and will be maximized in this area here that is, uh, that is blanked out with this white box. The next step is to customize the way the QR code will be represented. The key thing to note here is the body shape. Really, I recommend choosing something that will make it easy to select uh, the background layer versus the foreground layer. So what is represented here by the black dots versus white dots? Because if you have them all clustered together, they create islands, which means you have to click a lot more. So we really want to reduce this to a couple clicks rather than tens or hundreds of clicks. So we're going to go ahead and pick something really straightforward, really easy. I personally like these dots because they're very clean. And we'll just slide this up to high quality. I'll leave everything else as default and go ahead and export as .svg. All right, looks like that went through. So we'll jump on over to Fusion 360. This is a blank canvas, brand new project, nothing going on here. We're gonna go ahead straight away, creating a new sketch. Pick any plane, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then in the insert dropdown menu, click on insert SVG. Select that file that was just downloaded from the QR code generator. All right, here it is. And it's looking pretty good. As we see in the middle there, the logo is centered and scaled up to the entire area that was indicated by that white um, box in the previous uh, view. All right, looking at the settings, it all looks good to me. So I'm gonna click on OK. Now that we finished sketch, let's go ahead and select uh, the high areas that we want to actually extrude. So the way we're gonna do that is select the entire image and then shift click and then deselect the low areas. By low areas, I mean what is represented by white in the original image. And by high areas, I mean what the, the black uh, colored pixels in the original image. Great. So now that we have this selected, we can go ahead and click on extrude. I'll give it an arbitrary two millimeters. And with that, we're going to select everything else. I'm just going to go ahead and extrude in the opposite direction, indicating that with a negative. 
and I would I want to join this right so I don't want to have this as a new body I want it to be one complete unit and now we have a starting point we can use for our QR code you'll see that it gives that extrusion we're looking for that uh, that 3d popping effect that will have our QR code stand out when we finally print it uh, we can also go ahead and spruce this up a little bit right we can add a frame we can add text I have a few vector files of for example the carbon wad logo as well as the Kickstarter logo and I can really just go ahead and create a new sketch select the same plane I had as before and go ahead and just basically frame it out I can also go ahead and insert those additional vector files so I have the Kickstarter logo here maybe I'll make that a little bit larger Awesome. And then I can go ahead and also import the carbon wad logo. All right, that looks that looks good may move this around a little bit, adjust it. I'm going to delete these edges here. Then I'm going to go ahead and just add some text as well. And the way we can do text is by going to create text, selecting the area we'd like to have text in. I'm going to go ahead and center it, pick a font, and then say something along the lines of rugged carbon fiber fitness tracker. Perfect. Then we can go ahead and space this out a little bit, maybe about 20, give this a little bit more of a height, just enough for it to fit. Just gonna adjust the boundaries a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and also extrude this, but before I do that, I wanna give this a little bit more of a dimension as a frame. So I'm gonna change the sketch plane in order for it to be almost a background frame. So you can just do that by clicking on finish sketch, right click on the sketch uh, operation we did, and redefine sketch plane we're looking for. I'm going to use the bottom surface of the second extrusion as our new sketch plane. And you'll see it's shifted from up here to just right below uh, the actual QR code. Perfect. Now with that, we can do something very similar to what we did before. Click on edit sketch so we can reselect the profile of this. Go back to finish sketch. Uh, we're not really interested in the bodies, so we really just want to extrude everything here. We're going to extrude this in the negative direction as well, also using a join operation. And we can just go ahead and just do something like negative two. Click on OK. And then you have a frame. And the final step here, of course, would be to go back to the sketch to select all the letters that you want to extrude now in the positive direction. Click on finish sketch. Then you can go ahead and click on extrude. And again, I'm just gonna set this value because I like the number two. Click on the join operation and then click on okay. All right, uh, a couple things I'm just gonna do, just a couple of finessing uh, operations on the corners, maybe a fillet, a chamfer, what have you. Anything to clean up a little bit. I'm going to set the edges to about three millimeters just to round it off a bit. And there we have it. We have our 3D model. 
in order for us to go to uh, the slicer, we can click on 3D print, select the model you'd like to send over, and then select the application. In my case, I'm gonna select uh, Bamboo Studio, and then click on OK. All right, so it looks like right now, uh, it is a little bit big for the current build plate. So here's the build plate and the model is just overlap over it. I'm just gonna size it down a bit. I mean, I'm not going to be too specific with this. The only thing I might wanna do is, even though I shrunk it a bit, I'm going to uncheck uniform scale. I would like a, a size of, or a Z depth of about five millimeters, just to give it a little more depth. Uh, one thing to note is that you might get a little bit of stringing with dots like this, but nothing too crazy. And the last thing we have to do here is uh, once you're happy with the size, I want to have uh, the least amount of areas selected. So because there's going to be a lot of black dots, I don't want to be sitting there selecting those. I could do a layer uh, paint. But what I like to do really is set the primary color as black, the, and then effectively um, paint in the white. So that way I can just select a few areas and I already have most of it good to go. Again, you can also select height range and then try to get the heights just right, but I find that sometimes I miss a layer or two, and this tends to be a much cleaner way to do it. I'm also going to make sure that the QR code is entirely uh, white because if just the surface layer is white, then sometimes you can see through the white into the black, and I want it to just have nothing that contrasts it on the base uh, QR layer. So. I'm going to keep the entire QR uh, here from this point to this point white and everything above that black. And I'll offer a nice contrast and it'll be very clean in the final print. Now for the text, I'm also going to go ahead and color in the green, overlay the white. I think for this text as well, what I'm going to go ahead and do is make the entire text character white for the same reason, because a, a single or a couple of white layers on a black layer tends to show through sometimes. And then for this guy here, for the text or the subtext, I'm going to go ahead and give it a gray. Awesome. I'll go ahead and select everything else and we'll be good to go. Okay, here's the final model that I came up with. You'll see that I got all of the edges around uh, Kickstarter and all the edges around Carbon Wad. So all we have to do now is click on Slice Plate and then Print. Just make sure you load in the right colors and uh, once the printer is available, I'll go ahead and get this printed. It prints pretty quick on the Bamboo Lab. There it is, complete. Looks pretty good. Pasted it in my local gym on top of a carbon wad board prototype, and we're good to go. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video and found value in it. Please like, comment, subscribe, leave some feedback, maybe some suggestions for future videos in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to read them. And looking forward to seeing you all in a future video.